So let's go to our IBC code, which most of us are operating under, and see what it says about designing for serviceability limit states. Well, there's precious little, actually. If you go to section 1604.3, there's a brief paragraph called serviceability. And it basically says, uh, under a performance language kind of approach, that we have to consider it and we have to address it. But uh, the topic is very limited, and mostly it focuses on member deflections, that is, floor deflections of beams and joists and so on, and seismic drift. Those are the two uh, most common issues that were addressed in the IBC code. And the code is basically silent on all other serviceability issues because the meeting serviceability limit states is pretty much left to the design of the engineer. Similarly, ASCE 710 mentions serviceability in several portions of the, of the, of the document. Section 1.3.2 in Chapter 1 requires that uh, we have to design for strength limit states, but we also have to address serviceability limit states. And it mentions the same things, drift, vibration, or other deformations that affect the intended use and performance of the building or the other structure that we might be designing. Indeed, ASCE 7 also has a non-mandatory appendix, Appendix C, which contains about five pages of guidelines, and these are uh, interpreted really as suggestions, not requirements. It gives you some guidance about uh, what are the important serviceability limit states, and it provides a, a lot of different references that you can go to as a designer to obtain more information. I mentioned the AISC specification, 360-10, in Chapter B. It specifically states that uh, we have to address service of the limit states and that they should not be exceeded when the structure is subjected to all the appropriate load combinations needed for serviceability. In Section B, 3.9, it talks about uh, serviceability again, and it points us to Chapter L which is a chapter that contains a little bit more information. Here we have Chapter L of AISC 360.10. Again, it's what I would call mom and apple pie kind of language. And it basically just says we have to address serviceability limit states and that we have to control the appearance, maintainability, durability, and comfort of the occupants under normal usage. Once again, no specific limits are prescribed within the standard itself. I mentioned the ASCE 710 commentary. Uh, one of the useful things in there, it does give us some suggested load combinations to use. It gives us a range of limits, but no specific re requirements or uh, guidelines. Lots of references. And something to notice uh, that's important last version, ASCE 710, our wind load committee included uh, maps that are, were intended to be used for serviceability design. And those maps encompass both a 10-year mean recurrence interval as well, a as well as a 25, 50, and 100-year. You as the design engineer are free to choose whatever mean recurrence interval you think is appropriate to design for for your particular building. Again, there is no specific code requirement. So what I'd like to do now, before we get into a deep discussion on drift and the components of drift, I'm going to go through quickly some of the highlights of the ASC 7 wind provisions. Clearly, in order to calculate drift under wind loads, we need to understand some of the basic wind load requirements. So that's what we're going to do in the next few minutes. In Chapter 26, you'll notice that the basic wind pressure equation that is used and is the heart of the standard is uh, written and identified. It's important to realize that this wind pressure equation is really the standard wind equation that you'll see in just about every uh, specification around the world, including the Euro Code, the Australian Code, the Canadian Code. The, the terms and the uh, Symbols might be different, but the principles are all exactly the same. 
basically you have a velocity pressure which is the one half rho v squared term you have a term that in ASC 7 we call k sub z which is a terrain exposure it adjusts the waste the basic wind uh, pressures for height as well as the different exposures being an open country exposure or a suburban exposure or an exposure that you might have over, over water. 